Hello and welcome. My name is Richard Gombrich and I was employed by Oxford University for almost 40 years to teach Sanskrit and Pali, but mainly Sanskrit. However, my interest was mainly in Pali and that means, of course, that I was attracted to the subject by my admiration for and great interest in the words of the Buddha. And when I began teaching Pali in Oxford University, there was actually no course whatsoever in Buddhism. And 40 years later, when I retired, that again meant that there was no course in Buddhism except by special favor as a special subject. And I thought this just wouldn't do. And so I sacrificed a lot of the retirement leisure that I had imagined might exist on the other side of the mountains. And instead, I set up the Oxford Center for Buddhist Studies with the aim of helping people to study and understand better the wonderful teachings of the Buddha. Not just that, but also all the different Buddhist traditions spread over the world in the last two and a half millennia. In particular, I was very disappointed that although lots of people said they were interested in Buddhism, some of them even said they practiced Buddhism, and there were lots of books being published about Buddhism, I didn't find the standard of those books very high, and I was very struck by the way in which the books didn't really, in most cases, show much acquaintance with the words of the Buddha which have been preserved in the Pali Canon. And I thought it was high time for the good of the world that people all over the world, and preferably schoolchildren all over the world, should be given some acquaintance with the Buddha's teachings in his own words. And of course, that would have to happen normally in their own language. But those who were really interested should learn the Buddha's language, Pali, because after all, it's not a particularly difficult language. And a great advantage for people in the West is that Pali is usually written in their script, the Latin script. Now, I had been teaching Pali, as I say, for nearly 40 years. But I had particular reasons, quite a few of them, for being dissatisfied with what I'd been doing. When it came to the final examination, I thought, my goodness, I've been teaching these people Pali for two years, but they don't really seem to know very much yet, although I know them personally and I know that they're intelligent and on the whole quite keen and industrious. What's wrong? So I thought about it and I realized that there was a lot wrong. And one of the things that was wrong was that we followed very old traditions of how to teach a language, especially a class classical language, and we asked people to learn the language as if they were going to use it. We didn't do this when we taught French or German. We taught people how to find the railway station and how to ask for a cup of coffee, how to use the language themselves, and that's what they needed to do. But after all, there's not very much point in learning Pali, unless your purpose is to learn to read it. Now, in order to read a language, firstly, you don't have to be able to do it at speed. It's not like listening to a language, when you have to catch what the other person says. You've got time to look things up. And so, you can use a dictionary. And in fact, it is essential if you're going to learn Pali well and continue, continue with it, to keep using a dictionary. A Pali dictionary isn't very like 
a little traveler's handbook for finding how to ask for a cup of coffee. It gives you a great deal more information. And you will find, as you advance through a Pali course, that you need a dictionary every day. And don't criticize yourself for that. Praise yourself. Because the greatest scholars are continually having recourse to the dictionary, which is the great depository of knowledge about the language. So I thought, well, there's a problem with the courses which have been published. There are many of them. The courses in Pali, because they don't concentrate on telling people how to read the language. And why don't I strip out everything which isn't needed for reading the language? So that's the first thing. And the worst thing beyond that, something much worse in fact, was that in order to learn anything well, you should study it fairly intensively. And you can say it's very simple that the progress you make in understanding the subject will correlate directly to the amount of time you spend on the subject. Well, the way that the British University works, of course, there tend to be three terms, and there's a summer vacation of 16 weeks, and people did Pali over two years, and I found that they did Pali for a year, they went away for 16 weeks, and when they came back, they had forgotten almost everything after a 16-week break. And indeed, the rest of the year, too, it was much too spread out. You did Pali for two hours a week. Now, that isn't the way to learn a language. And so, when I devised my own course, the first thing I determined was that people should have to study much more intensively. And I set up a course, which has been running for a few years, where I taught people very intensively for a fortnight here in Oxford. And then another course where I taught them also rather intensively, almost as intensively, for three weeks. The results were really excellent, and everybody was very pleased and said they did manage to learn to read Pali by the time those two or three weeks were over. But it isn't very easy to find pupils who can just set aside two or three weeks and do nothing but Pali. And so, obviously, I hadn't got an answer which would suit very many people. And so we've come up, thanks to my friends and colleagues and pupils, uh, Alex Wynne and Alex Vrona, we've come up with a sort of compromise which fits modern technology and modern habits, and it's this course which you have very sensibly decided to buy into. I would just warn you that the rule that the more time that you spend on the subject, the better you will progress, is just as applic applicable here. So don't think it's a waste of time to work hard at it, and in particular, look at it from the negative point of view. If you do some Pali and then don't touch it for weeks or months or even longer, don't be surprised if you've forgotten it afterwards and really wasted a lot of the effort you put in beforehand. But at least in this case, you will have the course which you've paid for and you can go back and revise. Suppose you left after, say, level two and then you didn't do anything for a while. When you go back, before starting off on level three, do please go back and look at levels one and two. Do revision. Because the course, as any language course, has to be cumulative. So, welcome to this course. I think you will enrich your lives by being able to read some of the wonderful things that the Buddha and his disciples had to say, and I hope you will never regret having signed on to our Pali course. I don't think you will. Hello, my name is Dr. Alexander Wynn. I'll be leading the instruction for these online Pali courses. I've been studying Pali now for a little more than 20 years, 
and it was about 20 years ago I came to study Pali and Sanskrit as a graduate student under Professor Gombridge. I remember my first visit with Professor Gombridge quite vividly. He asked me what I wanted to do, and I said I'd like to understand what the Buddha really taught. And I was half expecting him to fob me off and say, with scepticism, that this is impossible. But he said, yeah, I think we can do that. So I've had the good fortune to be studying early Buddhism ever since. I've written a couple of books on Buddhism and a few articles on early Buddhism. My main source of information about early Buddhism is contained in the Pali Canon. In the last, over the last 10 years, I've taught Pali and Buddhist studies in universities in England, India and Thailand. And for the last few years, I've been teaching the Pali on sc online school with Professor Gombridge. With these online Pali courses, we've tried to continue the approach of the Pali online school. We try to focus on essential knowledge, assuming no prior background to language learning whatsoever. We think that anyone can learn Pali and gain a more intimate access to the Buddha's teachings. What can you expect then? Well, in Pali level one, you'll study 24 lessons. For each lesson, there are video instructions and exercises connected to them. There's also a vocabulary builder containing more than 200 Pali words. These are connected to the lessons but can be used independently. The exercises include quizzes, noun and verb games, and translation exercises. We hope you'll enjoy the course. Please keep watching the videos. Please keep doing the exercises until it starts to make sense. You'll find that it's possible to make quite quick progress in learning Pali.